So this is hopefully going to be a very interesting video. I'm making a N-Gage controller for N-Gage emulation on the PC. Now, just as a bit of a background, there's an N-Gage emulator now, and a few months ago I did a stream playing some games um, on this emulator called EKAL21. Um, it's really good because you can play N-Gage games at a much better frame rate and better screen quality and just a bit more conveniently, but the problem is because the N-Gage has so many buttons, it's really difficult to and awkward to map them to a keyboard. So when I was playing it on the stream, I had like the 1 to 9 buttons mapped to like the number pad and some other buttons mapped around here and like the arrow keys. Um, like it worked well enough but it was really awkward so I've got this old arcade cabinet and I've heard of people making like their own fight sticks so I had the idea why not go on Thingiverse and find a fight stick and uh, customize it to make a controller for the N-Gage with a whole lot more buttons on it. So that's what I've done. I'll have a look at the parts first. So um, last year in my arcade cabinet I upgraded it to have Sanwa sticks in it because the original sticks were ancient and not very good. Um, so I have a Sanwa stick here that's gonna um, be the stick on it, and I've got an Ultimark iPack, which um, I've got the JPack in the arcade cabinet here because it's using an old JAMA connector, um, so that should work really well. So the emulator supports 20 buttons, so that's the four input directions, the 12 face buttons, the C, and pencil alphabet button or whatever it's supposed to be called and the two menu buttons so that's the uh, 20 inputs all together or four directions and 16 buttons so we'll have a look at what has been 3d printed uh, the original base design was a design on thingiverse which i will link to that in the description just as credit to the original designer my friend with a 3D printer helped redesign it to what my idea was, and this is the result. We've got this nice case which is going to hold everything. This is going to fit the stick, and there's 16 buttons, so there's like 1 to 9, 0, star hash, the two menu buttons, and C and alphabet. That's going to be really good, I think. It's got a plate on the bottom, um, and then we have to reprint this bottom plate because I measured the whole spacing wrong to put the eye pack on, but that's going to get reprinted. Okay, very good. Okay, so I've got all the buttons and everything in now. It's looking pretty good. So the outside it's all finished now so it'll look the same as the finished product so that's really good so next I have to start wiring it all together which I have a plan to do it I don't have a lot of experience with soldering but I think I'll be able to manage and then the fixed version of this bottom plate got done with the corrected hole spacing to mount the eye pack Okay, so that's all the ground wires done. Once I worked out what I was doing, it wasn't too hard. Just a bit fiddly. So, um, there's just starting here, going down to each one on the left, all the way around, and back to here. Uh, I've checked the continuity, and that's all good. And then, this wire here will go into either one of these grounds here. So next I have to try and work out the length that all these wires need to be and then cut them and then 
start soldering those on and then they connect to all the buttons here. Okay, that's all the soldering done now. Uh, so there's the ground wires which I showed just a second ago and there's the like each button has another wire coming off it. I thought it would be easier just to make them all kind of long and then worry about the length later so now I just need to try and work out how long to make all these wires and then cut the ends off them and then join them into this and also plug the wires back into the stick and connect those in. Alright, it's all wired up now. That was very awkward trying to get all the wires in because uh, there's these little screw things that screw down to clamp the wires in. I think everything's connected okay. I just have to plug it in and test it. Thankfully I don't have to worry about like which one goes to which pin or anything because in the Ultimark software you can remap all the connectors to whatever button you want it to, uh, to do. So uh, I think it's turned out pretty good so far. I just have to test it then carefully put it together and hope that none of the wires come out. It's finished. Put it all back together, and it's working. And it has turned out so good. The buttons and the logo and the stick clickiness and the colour. It's got a nice bottom plate and good screws holding it in and the cable fits well. I ended up uh, like kind of rooting the cable around here and then out. That's so good. So there's the buttons, the C button for backspace when you're typing and the alphabet pencil button. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, star and hash, and the two menu buttons and um, the 5 and 7 are kind of the two primary buttons when you're playing your game so that's why they're red. It has turned out so well. I'm very happy with it. Um, the only kind of slight issue is these buttons are kind of firmer to press than I would really like but it's not a big issue. So I will plug it into the computer and we'll try actually using it for some games. I've been using it a little bit to try it out and it's really good so far. We'll have a quick look at some games first with Colin McRae Rally, which is one of the best games on the Engage. It definitely makes the emulator a whole lot easier to use. Um, uh, the controls for this game are pretty simple because it's just basically 5 and 7. So other games get more complicated with their control schemes. So that was one race. So we'll have a look at some other games as well. Alright, this is Operation Shadow, one of the really good shooters on the system, a third person shooter.
it's uh, yeah, third person shooter made by the same people that did Ashen, which is a really good first person shooter on the system. It's a little bit awkward to get used to the controls, but that's good. So now we'll have a look at Super Monkey Ball, which is always fun. And this is a pretty good version of the game as well. It's very similar to uh, the Game Boy Advance version. Have a look at one last game which is The Roots. It's a really good action RPG with all sorts of leveling systems and loot and all that sort of stuff. It's a little bit like Diablo. Um, this is only right at the start of the game but I did finish this on the actual engage. quickly because I'm very low leveled and I don't have any good gear at the moment but it is a really good game and for some of these more complicated games once you um, get into them a bit more um, you really do need all the extra buttons to like just more easily access menus and other things, like I just got to level up here. Um, so the controller here does make a big difference in actually playing this stuff on the emulator. So I hope that's been an interesting look at making this thing. I know I had a lot of fun making it and using it. Um, Overall, I think it turned out really good. Just the design and look and layout of the buttons and everything. The only real issue is these buttons being a little bit too firm to press. So maybe if I was going to do it again, I would try and find some different buttons. Because these were the only kind of small arcade style buttons I could find on eBay. But maybe some other type of button would be better. Um, when you're using it and holding the buttons down your hand, gets a little bit sore after a while, but it's not too bad. So um, I think that will be all.
So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.